What's going on YouTube? I'm Poji Force. What's up? I'm Nathan. King of Game 16 here. And this is a video duel between myself and Nathan. I am running a Water Dark Fire Nature uh, Dragon Aggro. I guess it's not really an aggro. It kind of played like Control. And this was our Stompy Retribution. Nathan was running the Stompy deck. Um, sorting up here to play the game. Um, someone made a comment on the previous video. I was being overly harsh, I will admit it. I was being overly harsh on the deck. Blurple is practically undefeated, so it was a little unfair to put it up against Blurple and call it a bad deck because it can't beat Blurple, because a lot of things can't beat Blurple. So the, I built something new here that I've seen play well, but isn't, you know, as amazing as Blurple. So that way it would have a fairer chance. And it was definitely a better matchup. Try not to do any spoilers. <laughs> yeah. That, that's why I'm really watching what I say right now. Uh, so just continue You can see watch. Nick eating in the background. Nick wasn't watching the match. <laughs> that just, was. Just oh. continue to watch, and you'll you'll start to see some things that definitely let this deck show it does have some strength to it. I'm still in strong belief that it's not the optimal build for Mono Nature, though. But... I was admittedly extremely harsh on the deck in the previous video, and it while the video did garner a lot of uh, interesting discussion, I will admit that I was being overly harsh both on the deck and its builder. I do apologize to Verhi. I believe his name was Gavin Verhi. Um, I'm going to have to look that up and be sure that I got his name right. That would be even more embarrassing I get his name wrong. <laughs> um, now, in case you can't see the results there, Sean did win the dice roll and got I rolled pick. boxcars. So... Rolled a nice solid twelve. These were new sleeves. Um, if the we're gonna have to try to. They're also like, the glare free sleeves, so if you can't see the. I cards, don't think they were glare, glare free, but the thing about glare free sleeves is yeah. See, like I played a tendril grasp there, and you can barely see it. Um, can't see what Nathan played because his arm's in the way. Hey, what can I say? I wasn't. Hall, it was root trap. That. I mean, he's playing mono nature, and that is a. Balloon shroom, whatever. What's, what's it called? I keep calling Drifting it toadstool. Drifting toadstool. I keep calling it poisonous mushroom because that's what it was in Duel Masters. And then I play a logo scan, and I screw up and realize I didn't have the proper mana down to play logo scan. And I'd already drawn cards, so I go and I fix it. <laughs> um, but something I would like to do in the near future is remake my own personal. Uh, and now at turn three, he's got five mana, breaking shields. This first game started out really poorly for me because I had no answers and he already had two creatures on board. And my mana was just way up there yeah. fast. I, I, Which, Mono Nature should do this. I ended up finding, like, I have to concede that Drifting Toadstool is actually pretty useful in Mono Nature because the deck is supposed to be aggressive. And while he does reduce your hand options, he does something that Sprout doesn't do, which give, which is give you a body on board. As like, for example, the Toadstool just took two shields before it died. I personally, I like Toadstool pretty much from the get-go. The only reason he was not in my original... Mono Nature build was I was trying to keep that as, for the most part, a Beastkin build. The only thing I was wanting to play in there that wasn't Beastkin was Lepidos. But looking back at it, that definitely... Lepidos hurt the deck more than it helped it. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking. And that's why I took some more changes through the future when I continued to play it. But I want to give it one more shot to make the most optimal build out of it. And we'll post video on it later. And I think I just played a Reap and Sow. So now I'm at six mana. Yeah, you Nathan did not play mana last turn, so I ended up managing to catch up to him in mana. Yeah, but at this point from my hand, I didn't need to charge mana. I was looking at what was in. You my ended up hand. doing it anyway, though. Well, that's because of what I drew that turn. What I drew that turn was a uh, flame spike. Yeah, it was a flame spike. So that would have been my guess. It's like, and you were hoping for the for the one six flame spike. Yeah. And you're showing Nick what you got going on. And what I had in the hand was a flame spike with a bronze arm saber tooth. And I was I, I made the mistake of putting terra pit mana very early. And at this point, I was wishing I had held on to it because okay, against I, mono I nature, the thing about because against the, mono nature terra pit to mana probably mm, the worst move. Yeah, because, it depends on what you're playing. The blurple deck can manage it because I can still one six into a hydra medusa and, or one five into a hydra medusa and kill it. Yeah, but for this deck... But for this deck, Terra Pit is literally my only answer to 
like half of the big guys in the deck. Yeah. So tossing that in mana instead of holding on to it was a the, bad idea. The for cards me. that you me had, trying to get things closer so you can see things better. The cards that it was the only answer to was Silver Fist, which you still see me beating face in with. Um, force it. And flame now, spike. Now at that point, I went ahead and let the shield through because I know that Mono Nature does not have fast attackers. I I was admittedly worried about Tendril Grasp, and then I remember the deck doesn't run Tendril Grasp, so needless fears. And then I bounced the Silver Fist with a Rusalka. Rusalka's a temporary answer, and unfortunately I didn't yeah. draw him as often as I would have liked. The deck as was forty two cards. You can see he's got a whole play set. Of, I've got all uh, Gloom Hollows yeah. in play. And then yeah, he, that, he returned to Soils, one of them. That was really harsh there, was the full play set of Gloom Hollows. And that's really something that's hard to get by at this point. It doesn't help either that this first game, I'm going to go ahead and say it now, I hit a good number of Shield Blasts. Um, At this point, I had already drawn a second Silver Fist. So I started playing more into mana. And I figured he had more Rasalkas in hand, so I was trying to get at the point where I could drop both Silver Fist in the same turn. I had Boltail Dragons in hand. Yeah, he did. He had at least one. I, I had remember. two, actually, and I think I ended up drawing into Tatsurian as well. And I was trying to build up so that way I could swing through. Because I had like all my finishers in hand, and I was, and I, I was digging for things there because I played the Logo Scan, I think. Yeah, I want to say you went Logo Sand, Tetsurian. Yeah. yeah. Unchained, even though I had nothing to target with it, which was a shame. Yeah. Well, actually, against Modern Nature, unless you get Tetsurian out early, generally you're not going to have a lot you can target because m the stuff that they're going to keep on board is going to be way too big. Later in the match, though, I did have the opportunity to target something with Tetsurians. Yeah, I think you've got a Toadstool or, like, a Prickleback. Moonhaller Tribe. The point is, is that I killed something. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes you feel better about yourself... Hey, I can... won... See, there's the second Silver Fist there. Yeah. Two Silver Fists. Yeah. And I was already struggling with one. I think I managed to kill one. No, I didn't. No, you didn't I kill that game. I just bounced it. So I blocked there. Yeah, and then... And I'm basically... I'm pr I think I played the the bull tail next next turn and i'm relying on my double yeah. breakers to swing through you did play the bull tail right now you, you want to play bull tail you double break let's let's slow down a bit because now we're getting ahead of the video okay but uh, here yeah. i am at 12 mana i wished i had more <laughs> i don't you know, think more was like necessary that. More was necessary because I wanted to play both the bull tail in my hand. I doubt you'd ever be at that much with this deck. Yeah, probably not. Um, Mono Nature does it. But <laughs> when Mono Nature but does there we it, go. Exactly. Eight mana to the bull tail, and bull tail is going to swing in for a double break. And if I recall correctly, there was the root trap. Yep, root trap into the Tatsurian. And it, for some reason, you had to think about it. I don't know why you had to think about it. Because for some reason, I was thinking Rasalka was also a blocker. So I was thinking, oh, get rid of the um, Gloom Hollow. So that I mean, in the I, end, it didn't matter. The point was is that <clears throat> you got rid of my only win. Like, if you had got rid of any of them, I would have lost. I'm actually very Because I needed all of them in order to swing through for game. Sure. No, um, if I, w I looked at it, if I didn't get rid of... Actually, that's right. You had to get rid of Tatsurian because yeah, otherwise Tatsurian. I would have double break and then one of the other two guys would have swung yeah. for game. It had to be Tatsurian. Yeah. So that was game one. I actually lost that game quite badly, too. I'm yeah. still surprised you didn't attack with Rathalka with that last shield and then attack with Gloom Hollow. Because I still... I would have lost either way, Nick. I didn't have enough. He had four his shields. I only broke two. Oh. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> because when I looked at it, it looked like he only had three shields left. No, he had four shields when I started attacking. I double broke with Bull Tail, and he root trapped my Tetsuri, and I had two attackers left. He had two shields. I wasn't going to win. Yeah, I actually did a lot of summoning Silver Fist oh. that game. and But I learned very quickly to hold on to the Terra Pits. Yeah, because that really hurt you in that first game. Yeah. Ironically, the second game, I held Terra Pit the whole time. I never found the opportunity to play it. Yeah. Actually, I don't think you got a chance to play it in the entirety of the match. I don't no. Think, I don't think I did. did. Once. Once? Okay. You remember? No. <laughs> you don't? We'll see I'll it. mention it when we get there. Yeah, we'll see it. We'll see it happen. If you say it happens, we'll, we'll get a chance. I remember how you played one Terra Pit. I don't remember if it was the second or third game, though. We'll mention it when we get there. 
Now, I remember this game. Nick's accidentally giving away spoilers. This game here. Not really. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. I remember what You don't know. You didn't like, realize it, but you did. Yeah, I went ahead and went force it, getting charged straight to a prickle back. Force it's really useless in that deck. It and, really is. And he's one of the changes I would get rid of. I mean, yeah, he's big, too. He's another big guy, but the fact that he can't swing over creatures makes him less of a threat than the likes of Silver Fist and Tetsurian. Well, this is why the change I would suggest for the deck is instead of force it, play Mighty Shouter. Or play... Tendrograss, because there was several well, points. Like I said, I was worried about a Tendrograss that well, first see, game. The tendril a Tendrograss would get rid of blockers and make it easier for you to swing over for game. Tendrograss, I agree, should be in the deck, but not in the place of the Forsets. The Tendrograss, I think, should go in the place of the Chief Mini Tribes. Mini Tribes didn't see play at all. Yeah. Actually, ironically, that if I remember the way that, that first game ended, you had a Mini Tribes in yeah, hand. Yeah, I was... I so had, you could have played it for effect, but it was pointless at that yeah, time. Yeah, I was like, do I really want to do this just for gloating purposes? And you were just like, come on, just finish it already. Yeah, so I was let's like, okay. move on. We got we got games to play. Yeah. I, so here he is. I've got the Gloom Hollow out. He's got Moon Hollow Tribe and Razor Hide. I kind of wanted to gloat that game a little bit just by going like how he said I would never get off a chief mini tribes activation i think you should have just done it just for fun yeah i was i was tempting it but he was right we should have just continued on yeah there was it was no point in it like you were you had won the game there was really no point the point was gloating mm, that was the that's point. bad sportsmanship and then he <laughs> returns to soil gloom hollow not the worst thing to happen because you know it does give it you give me it gives me more mana but gloom hollow, that's another disadvantage of playing mountain nature is that all of its removal gives your opponent more mana and Gloom Hollow is probably. And here, I think I dropped. I dropped a blocker to stall the Moon Hollow, yeah, so I could. A cyber so I could uh, logo scan for two more cards because yeah. I was digging at that point. Um, Gloom Hollow really hurts Mono Nature because it stops every single and he early sprouts game play. And then four mana to Reap and Soul. And yeah, I didn't really care for either of my draws. I forget what I charged, but. Neither of them were really. It's like a creature, but that's about all I know. Maybe mm -hmm. Moonhaller tribe. With the, no, uh, wouldn't have been. Oh, Razor Hood. Oh, I was Toadstool. Toadstool. Oh, yeah, I looked like two mana. That's why I said Moonhaller tribe. So now it's my turn. I forgot what I was holding at this point. I put a. I think I held a one. I put a. a uh, what's it called? Heat Seekers down. And I'm, I'm like, well, he isn't swinging over. So, and if he even if he does summon something, I still have the blockers. So I'm going to search out something big. And hopefully do something. I think I was. I believe you took. And this fail. this was the point where I go. F I spend forever looking through my deck to make sure what was in the deck, so that way I knew what was left in the shields. Or maybe not. Maybe maybe not. That maybe. happens at one point. Uh, that was game three. That was because you did it. See that now you did it again. Now by saying there's a game three, you've acknowledged the fact that I've already won game two, and now it's spoiled. It's ruined. There you go, YouTube. I win game two. You can <laughs> skip ahead if you want. <laughs> Well, still, there were some interesting plays that... I don't remember. I'm pretty sure... I, yeah, I did get Tatsurian, though. So yeah, that way I can blow up that Moonhaller tribe. You went Tatsurian. Um, unchained. Because I, I need to be specific here. Unchained. Tatsurian the Unchained. Because there's also one regular Tatsurian in there. Who didn't get to see much play. Because the stuff that he's meant to counter is not something you run into in Mono Nature. But I use Unchained and I banish the Moonhaller tribe. And I don't remember what you... I don't remember what you did after this. Um, I <laughs> summon a razor hide. Yeah. Was that it? That was it. So he summoned a razor. Because I've been playing off the yeah. top deck. Yeah, that's another. Yeah, that's right. He yeah. was top decking. Nature does that a lot. And I think I break some shields at this point. No, I bounce that guy. And and then I think I play a blocker. Yep. And then you broke. And then I double broke. And I don't think I hit a blast. No. No. And I'm like, well, might as well go on in here. Do some damage. How you see damage. Should be 2142. I love his channel. Sponsor. Not really. I just referenced like three different channels right then. Maybe I'll actually link them. Yeah, my cool hand people. wasn't that great at this point. And he plays the Tatsurian. I'm like, hey, I got Cyber Sprite. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. But I knew I had to go after your Tatsurian. I don't even know why I was running Cyber Spike, to be honest. Because I could be playing Refi, who's bigger. I'm not running the Neuron in this build. Why am I even playing Cyber Sprite? Because it's a turn one blocker. I could have easily just played the turn two blocker. Who's bigger than... Who's got more things he's bigger than. 
And at least he wouldn't be bumping with Moon Hollow Trident and Razor Hide. This is true, but I, I believe I that was your original thought was he was a turn one blocker. It was just, it was just a bad idea. No, the, my original thought was I'm going to just steal things. And I play the Gila Flame for extra care, and I swing with Gila Flame. At that point, I had it regardless because I had two X. I had even if he had two blasts, I had three extra attackers. And that's where I was showing that I had in the shields all of his evolutions. Well, literally, I got the Tatsurian because I you broke, broke. Sh you broke shield, and then the rest of my shields was another Tatsurian. Look at the audio levels. I hope this isn't going to be all blown out. We're going to have to listen back on this and make sure it ain't yeah, screwed up. Yeah, and two more bronze arm saber tooths. it just did me no good at that point that's the danger of running a whole lot of evolutions and the damn and that's actually kind of why i feel like when you're playing a fire deck which has fast attackers you almost don't need evolutions but see the evolutions and mono fire that you i'm not would... saying mono fire but just decks that run fire um like this deck had zero evolutions in it but I... it had bull tail dragons and gila flames i believe it depends on the evolution uh, like what makes Blurple so powerful is is also the fact that it's evo it has good evolutions. Yeah. So that way they can come out and do some massive damage and attack the same turn. Because you take Fire Nature Rush for example, the evolutions you play in there are Bronze Arm, Saber Tooth, and the um Laser Arm Tracking. Yeah, Laser Arm. Moving on to game three. And I started it out. Looks like a Reap and Sow. Yeah, my hand wasn't that great for opening. I can't even see what I set in mana. Everything in my hand, outside of the Reap and Sow, I believe... Yeah. And he... To yeah. Yeah, I, I, Toadstool was my only cheap play in the hand. I had just a hand of... Reap, I had, my hand was like Reap and Sow, Double Silver Fist, the Flame Spike, and... Uh, Toadstool. Toadstool. It was. It, it was. I set mana and I passed. I haven't. And again, I think Toadstool is about to take a shield. Yeah. And this is me trying to like get things over because it's like showing all his mana and not showing my mana. Yeah, I forget at all. what I charged that turn, but I know what I'm holding in hand is my two. The deck was running fist. twelve triggers. It was running three Tornado Flame, three Tendril Grasp, three Bone Blades, and three Terra Pit. And I played the Heat Seekers there to get rid of that guy, so he doesn't take a whole bunch of shields like the first game. Hey, it's not my Nick's fault. not even commenting. He he walked away from us. It, it's not my fault Can you've developed a new hatred for... Well, then speak up! Stool. You got something to say? Get over here and watch the video and say something. I don't really have anything to say, really. Nick being antisocial. Anyway, I rusalked something while I was busy fussing at a Nick. A silver fist, which I then turned around and replayed, still holding the second silver fist in hand. Now, I think this is the point where I play the Gigahorn Charger. Yes, it is. And this is where I go through the entire deck and I look at it card by card to determine just what was in the deck and therefore deduce what was in my shields. And I noticed that I had two Terrapit in the deck. I had none in my hand. I had yet to play any in mana. I knew I had one Terrapit in shields. So I'm, so I'm like, hmm, this is going to be fun. And I could tell you the way you were acting... I knew you knew that there was a terror pit. Well, you knew I had something. It didn't help either that though you were making. Well, no. You guys were teasingly accusing me of cheating in doing this, even though it's a perfectly legit strategy. And it's Nick part of the... accused you of cheating. And I and I, I and I grinned and I'm like, hmm. I admitted it was a I smart was, move. Was it's a legit but strategy. It's a legit here's strategy. Thing. Tell. Around, though. Here's the thing I'm though. And if if and when we do get organized play, that can be considered stalling. And you can... It depends on how quickly you do it. Yes, it does depend on how quickly. But, but when we had time... organized play back in the day, and we and people played Rumbling Terror Horn, which is essentially the same thing, but better, people would do that. They would go, they quickly look through their deck, figure out what was still in there, so they could determine just what was down. Yeah, but I'm just referring to the amount of time you took on this one. Could have mm. been considered stalling. Maybe. I didn't um... take that long. Or did I? Apparently, I did. Yeah, you. Took, We've been talking about this for like a you, minute. You, you took, took long about enough. About two and a half minutes. You took long that. enough for it to matter, but I wasn't too worried about it. I mean, this this is casuals. The only reason why it matters in a tournament is because each match is timed. Yes. And it's generally for most games forty minutes for a match. 
Jim. And I got the, I believe I got the Unchained. Uh, no, I got the bull tail. Got a bolt tail. I got the bull tail because I was realizing that I had no and answer to. This is to... where I dropped the second silver fist and a prickle back, and I went ahead and, and he double over. breaks. And actually, I had the benefit of also having a bone blades and shields, where I probably would have lost. So I knew that terrapit was one of the last two. Yeah. So I'm like, it's okay. I can still survive one more turn unless he yeah, has right. the evolution. You just gave a spoiler, Sean. What? How? Do, what? What did I say? You'll see it when you watch the video again. What did I Nick? What did I say? You said when I lost, uh, it, it's something about you uh, not losing. I would have lost right then if I hadn't, if he had, if I hadn't had the terrapid. Uh, no, because you already had. You had two attackers. Yeah, but so you I know, knew but that you're in... about. I know what you're. Remember what you're about to play. You're about to just start dropping gloom mm. hollows. I think it, no. I dropped a cyber sprite. I dropped a cyber sprite here because I had two mana left over. Okay, I so logo scan because I realized I didn't have anything good for the following turn. And trying to stall because I didn't want to just rely on the Terrapid. I didn't know if he had an evolution on hand or whatnot. I go for the chump blocker with Cyber Sprite. I did have an evolution in hand, but I didn't have any bait worth putting it on. Because I had two bronze armed saber tooths in hand. And I was still waiting for a bait card. Um... Which you could have topped into, so Cyber Sprite was probably the smart play. Yeah. Actually, no, I didn't have Bronze Arm Saber Tooth. I had Flame Spike in hand. Because if it yeah. would have been Saber Tooth, I would have played Saber Tooth over the second Silver Fist. Because I played the Prickleback last turn. I would have went Prickleback Saber Tooth. Yeah. And I let him take the shield because I know one of them's Terrapit. And I Terrapit the other one. Um, now, I can't remember what it was I played over there. I think it was Toadstool without activating effect. Now, I, now, look at the match right now. He's got big guys on board, all five shields. I got small fry and no shields. This is a really bad situation. I logo scan. Did I get a uh, Rusalka? No, you got a... Uh, I got a Gloom Hollow. Yeah. Which means I can chump one more turn. <laughs> this is chump stalling. It's like this deck wasn't playing, and then I what was I doing? I'm like I got seven mana. Yeah, you were getting yourself prepared to play the. You were showing me. Oh yeah, I was asking to see your graveyard, and I realized you had not played a single destruction spell the entire game. Yeah. So odds were very high. You would either top into one or it'd be in your shields. I was in a very bad position. But I'm like, you know what? I might as well just do it because if if I keep waiting, you're gonna draw one eventually anyway. And I break two shields, and I'm terrified of a of a evolution or a removal spell. Yeah, and that is a uh, toadstool. I think you play a third silver fist. Yes, I yes, I did. He played all three silver fists this game. Yeah, and it was it, it was kind of brutal. Sean was in a bad way. He was terrified. It was looking good for Nathan. <laughs> Since when is oh yeah, and then he pricklebacks at the same time. Yeah, because I'm I'm just good like that. And I'm like, well, now I'm gonna chump with a uh, cyber sprite. He's not doing anything else for me. And he, the toadstool has no reason yeah, to swing I, because gloom hollow's sitting there. I could have went to the flame spike, and now that I think about it, I should have gone to the flame spike if that is what I think is in my hand. Because I should have just. Charge the uh, silver fist, and you knew I had the bull tail because you saw me search it. Yeah. So at this point, if those aren't both triggers, I win. Or at least one of them being triggers. He needed two triggers in order to stop me, and he didn't get either in those shields. So this was guaranteed my win here. But it was. He did. Kind of I did hit a trigger, but at this point, it, it didn't matter. He got to decide who would beat him. So he. Returns the Gloom Hollow and I swing with Rusalka and friendly handshake. Because screw Scared Horrible, it can go to hell. <laughs> that was actually an extremely close. I mean, look, it didn't feel this close. Now, here's where it I did, know It didn't way. feel this close playing there, but looking back on it, I saw, like, there was so many different things you could have top decked to kill me both of those games that I won. Like, it's a wonder I managed to pull that out. And this yeah. is where I went, just went down my deck trying to see where the stuff root, was. Well, the root traps in particular. Um, all the root traps were towards the bottom of the deck. Actually, the last card was a root trap. Actually, it looks like the last two cards were root traps. No, it was the last card so, and the uh, card before the last. Yeah. But that's it for, for now, guys. It turns out that it wasn't as bad as we thought. Peace.